So 11 years capturing ground reaction force data and working with many, many players, thousands of players. I've just completed my uh, education with Smart to Move after purchasing my Smart to Move plate, and it's about time I took a golf lesson. So I'm very privileged to be with Gregory and Jean Paul, and they're going to give me a lesson on the Smart to Move plates today. Okay, Steve, today it's your turn to go on the plate and our turn to measure yourself. So we're going to do a normal session yeah. today, okay? You're going to stand on the force plate, we're going to measure a seven iron shot. And we're going to go into the process we do normally to analyze ground reaction forces and try to optimize your capacities. Okay. Let's go. Okay, so let's go. First of all, we need to know where the feet are, so please make the feet detection. Just small heel to heel to motion. Start feet detection. Start swing. Go. Great shot. Does it look like you do normally? Yeah. It's kind of shot you're doing. I would say, yeah, strike as well. Uh, something I like to do is just to collect uh, the air swing. Maximum speed air swing. Okay? okay, so you remove the ball, and the goal there is just to see how you organize yourself when you've got no ball to hit and only focus on maximum speed. Okay. Okay, Steve, you just have been measured on a smart to move 3D dual force plate. Now let's look at the data. So that's the general recipe. The first thing we want to measure on force plate is the sequence, the timing of the force. We call that the kinetic sequence. When do you apply the max peak force at peak lateral, rotational, and vertical force? So let's go to the peak lateral force. So we know that the peak lateral force should occur just at transition, which is going to cause the club to change direction. As you can observe here at peak lateral force, what is happening? Are you on time? Too late or too early? Too late. Too late, okay. Let's go to the second one, peak rotational. That should occur a little bit above left arm parallel to the ground, just on time, yeah. not sure a bit late. But more important, the last one, the vertical force, that should happen between left arm parallel and shaft parallel to the ground, which we call the, the dynamic peak windows. It's happening definitely too late. late. Too late, yeah. Okay. okay, the ball is gone. Yeah. After the ball is gone. It's like playing basketball like this. Throwing the ball and jumping after, yeah. okay? So we know that the general kinetic sequence uh, happening too late, lateral too late, rotational a little bit too late, and vertical force definitely too late. The second thing we want to look at is the point of force application. Where do you apply the force under your feet? So let's keep focus on the lead foot on that one. So nice position during the backswing, very good. Ball of the lead foot. Uh, base of the fifth and fourth metatarsus onto the, onto the trail foot. Peak rotational, you keep the point of force application toward the lead foot. Base of the fifth and fourth metatarsus, that's very good until now. Let's go to the peak vertical force finally. Very good. So we see that you get a point of force application toward the fifth metatarsus at the peak vertical force that happening too late. We will suggest you, and this is what we're going to do later with the drills, to make this point of application happening more toward the ball of the lead foot between the first and the second metatarsus. We know that if it's a universal point of a force application. We know that if every player are loading toward the ball of the lead foot between the first and the, fourth meta and the second metatarsus, you're going to activate what we call the extensor muscle that will help you to maximize the transfer of energy from the ground up through your body and through the club, and potentially increase your club at speed. We will look at that uh, later. Additionally, we can look at the line of pressure at that moment, even if the peak vertical force happened too late. Uh, we generally like to see a line of pressure, which is the green light linking the blue dot lead foot point of force application and trail foot force, force application. Uh, we like to see a number between five and plus five. Okay. So your minus six, that's still okay. But to be honest with you, just by fixing that blue uh, center of pressure or point of force application more toward the first metatarsus on the second one, you're going to change that value anyway. So that was the general overview. Uh, Jean-Paul, what about the air swing? We do the air swing just to see how naturally you manage your balance, specifically the balance. And what's interesting in is how you settle at top swing. When you just focus on max air speed, max swing speed, sorry, uh, without the ball, you try to be in a position you're very stable. So this yeah. is where you're strong, stable yeah. and strong, and you only uses your muscle actions to be sure the club's going fast. Okay. Don't control anything. Okay. So the way you stand at top swing, the distribution between trail and lead leg will indicate if you're more toward the trail leg, more into the middle, or more into the lead leg. Yeah. And these define different type of lower body action. Yeah. More lateral if you stand here, 
more rotational if you stand in the middle, more vertical if you stand on the ball, on the lead leg. Yeah, okay. okay. Let's have a look for you. So we're going to just stop at the top swing and see how do you manage that. Okay, we are at the top swing and we see that you're about 74, 26. If I go one, two picture later, let's say 70, 30. Yeah. Okay, which is typically what we see normally for uh, rotational players. Yeah. So people using much more the feet, doing this way, using AP force like that, maximizing that. Yeah. Okay. So this is when you try to make the max speed, this is how you organize yourself. Okay. If I just go back one second on the previous one with the ball, and if I stop at top swing, Exactly the same position. How much are you? 80-20. Mm -hmm. 80-20, yeah. That means you've been 10% more on the right side but what you normally do when you try to hit shot. Yeah. That means when you start your down swing here, in that case, with the ball, you already have to go back to the initial position where you're good. And this time, the, you already started to get yeah. the arms going down and everything can be learned for this mm -hmm. reason as well. Okay. So we know that's one direction we can go, try to not be as much as right on the top of the swing, yeah. just to be sure you're in a better position to optimize the forces and get a chance to not be late first. Yeah. Now it's gonna, we're gonna go back on the plate and we're gonna try to fix the first problem, which is the lateral pressure shift during the backswing. Okay. Okay? So I'll let you set on the plate, address the ball. Okay, first thing and as always, universal point of force application. I'm going to use the mini force pedal toward the ball of the lead foot. Um, as we mentioned before, we want that to happen more toward the first and second metatarsus. And I'm going to place the second force pedal toward the trail heel, mid trail foot, exactly at that position. So on the data, you've been over 80% pressure shift on the trail foot, and we would like to see you more 70-30. Okay, so if I'm struggling with that, trying yeah. to get 70-30, can you help me with that? Yeah, that's very simple. We're going to use the mod live straight away. Perfect. Don't worry, Steve. Nobody knows how much he's standing at top swing. Okay, <laughs> okay. that's why okay. we measure. Yeah. So can you make the feet position first, just to be sure you're loading Sorry. toward the good yeah. area? Yeah. That's perfect. So okay. you can stand there and you can see how much you're standing lead and right. What do you see? Yeah. So I'm trying to get the 70, yeah? Okay, that's these numbers here. Yeah. Would you be good with that if I get to that level? 65 to 70 on the trail lead would be perfect. We don't yeah. want to go over 70. That yeah. was your position before you were yeah. too much to the right side. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So load on the correct ball of the feet, on the lead leg, trail foot, on the mini force pedal. And by doing that, you will be much more centered than you, you were before. Okay. Okay, that's quite good. Yeah. So from there, maybe yeah. we can try to find where should be the vertical peak of force to time the vertical. Yeah. Perfect. The second thing is timing of the vertical force was definitely too late way after impact. So the first reel that I suggest you is make your backswing. Okay. We're going to try to give you the feeling of the timing of the uh, vertical by placing my hand here below your left arm. Okay, a little bit below. Okay, generally the, the dynamic peak windows is between left arm uh, uh, parallel to the ground or to shaft parallel to the ground. So I'm going to set my arm, lead arm 45 degrees to the ground. Let you repeat. And try to press toward the ball of the lead foot. Push down, very good. So that's the first drills. I mean, we recommend that to everyone actually. I'll let you repeat a couple of times by yourself. Let's measure a shot and see what happens. What did you feel? Strike was not great, but okay. felt a little bit better. Definitely from at the top, okay. Peak vertical. Peak rotational and peak vertical just at impact. Yeah. And yeah. let's look at the first thing, Jean-Paul, the, the backswing. Let's see if there is an improvement in the lateral pressure shift. It's a bit better with 72. That's yeah. much better, Steve. Yeah. That's so much this, better. This is better. It could be a lot more though, right? A bit yeah. more. And if you look at the line of pressure, the point of application, it's even better than what you yeah. did before. Yeah. 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 So it's concentrated yeah. more with yeah. the point of application. Yeah. Just got to less at the top, and then try and get the timings of the peak verticals earlier in the down. Zone. Yeah. The only one problem to solve at the moment is to fix your timing of yeah. vertical. Okay. That definitely should happen earlier. So I'm going to exaggerate. For me, I'm going to exaggerate yeah. the feel that I'm more left at the top. Yeah. The take feel, it off the right, the but then that allows me to trigger earlier left peak. For me, that's how I feel it. 
That's so one I'm of the feelings. Yeah. Yeah. And, one one the feeling, yeah. and the other feeling we like to give to the player is basically the reason when we push into the ground, the ground pushes back. Yeah. Okay. So basically, and this is what we see on the curve. When the curve goes up, that means the player is loading or yeah. pushing into the ground, into the lead foot. And when the curve goes down, that means the ground is pushing them back. Yeah. Okay. So the feeling you need to have is that the ground is pushing you back before impact, basically. Okay. So if I feel like my feet are off the ground at impact, would that work? Trying to get my feet yeah. off the ground at impact? Can we try that? Yep. Yeah. It would be great. Okay. Um, maybe we start without the plates first. Yep. Okay. But I like you feel that. I'm going to stand beside me just after. I'll show you first, then you do. I like you use the plate here. You stand here. You put the ball of the, uh, ball of the foot on here. I would like you push your foot back just okay. to be able to open your hip here. Yep. Okay. And this action of pushing from here will clear your hips and will clear the vertical properly. Yep. So your intent is just to be at the top swing, as we said, 70-30. Yep. Yep. But the same thing, your action on the lead leg is really to push actively towards okay. the back here. Okay. Okay. So you mm. match both sides at the same time. Yep. Okay. Not only loading, it's the way you want to offload this hip back. Okay. Okay. Let you do this way. First of all, just ball of the foot, the heel doesn't touch the ground. Very good. And you push this hip back. Okay, it's not active enough. Come on. That's it, much better. Okay, you feel when you push from this ball of the foot, you can push your hip back. Yep. Okay, that's an extension of your hip back yep. and up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So try to get the same feeling in your golf swing as well. You yeah, can do you it can even step more. Step off the plate. Very good. Yeah. Okay. So you want me to I mean, obviously not want to be yep. reversing, right? Yeah. So I'm you feeling feel like I'm. Do you feel safe? Or you want something uh, on the back? Can I have something yeah. behind that? Yeah, okay. I'll put something on the back. Yeah. So 70 30 top swing. Loading onto the two force pedals and pushing this hip back. So let's start the change. 60 40. Okay. That's in Even the too much. <laughs> yeah, okay. But at That's least windows, it's a big yeah. change. Yeah. Okay. Peak of rotational. Peak of vertical. Let's have a look there. Oh, interesting. Let's go to the lead foot, yeah. Lead foot, the blue curve here, shows the timing. Before impact, okay. a lot before impact. That's yeah, a that's a job. huge difference than a good what it did before. And trail foot is a bit later on. Line of pressure is neutral. Yeah. Yeah. It was minus six. Yeah. And you went to plus zero seven, which is in the in the correct windows. It's quite good there. It's getting there. It's wow. it's something interesting to develop here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Left foot is now under good timing. Right foot is a bit late. Yeah. So we're gonna right feel foot. that. Yeah. Left yeah. foot now is really releasing as we would like to. Right foot is a bit. Yeah. So I'm hanging pushing back. A bit later. You're pushing so back. So you, you're going to maybe try now to get the balls together, thinking together. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. For like that, that, we've got the different yeah. stuff. Do you want to show the drill with yeah. maximizing there? Yeah. yeah. Can I have both feet? This can, actually, can, I, can I feel yeah. that? We're going to make a small drill yeah. here. OK, we got a great drill, Steve, to try to activate your AP, lead foot AP force. So for that, we're going to use the T4D. So as you know, the quantity of torque, this is the resultant of both feet pushing in the opposite direction. Um, negatively or positively during the downswing. So we're going to place the 2T40 onto the ground, both feet onto the pedal, palms against the, the wall, and you're going to try to scroll onto the ground, front, back, front, back. Let me know how you can do that. Both of your feet, uh, Steve. Very good. Good. Very good. Good, yeah. Very good. Palm on the wall. How do you feel? <laughs> Silly. Yeah. I'm struggling with that motion. Okay. That's very interesting. Yeah. So that's a good test. We like to do that with not only juniors, but every type of uh, player level, amateur, high level player, senior as well. That also can help us to identify some limitation uh, in the human body. Okay. Again, I'm just a golf professional. My, I have my limits. Jean-Paul, what do you think about that? I think it's just uh, training in your motion capacities. And I'm pretty sure, as your rotational player, you need this AP force. You yes. need to then, then perfectly synchronized and get mm -hmm. active in the, in the swing and then for the follow through for you. And I think just this simple kind of exercises could help you to progress much bigger than any hitting any ball onto the force base. Okay. So I think we should go into the progression here, try to reinforce a bit this yeah. pattern. Just learn it, get your body ready to do it, and I'm sure we're going to integrate that into the golf yeah. swing after. We're going to start with small amplitude and small speed, just to one, two, one, two. And when you feel better, you can accelerate the rhythm and increase the amplitude. Tack, check. It has to be active. Check, check. 
Very good. Check. Check. Perfect. If you feel better, you do slightly stronger. Schlack, 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 schlack. How do you feel, Steve? Yes. Better now. Okay. Have a rest. 10 second rest and we do a second series. This time you try to go even faster. Yes. Try to don't pause oh. now. Tuck, 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 tuck. Very good. You see, only with three tries, you're starting to be much better. Yeah. That's very good. Okay. My suggestion, Jean-Paul, let's try immediately on the force plate and see the, the consequence, the effect let's of the, the club. Start swing. Strike was bad, but... How was the feeling? How's the footwork? Footwork felt yeah. better. Yeah. Strike aside, footwork felt like it was definitely better. You feel the moonwalk now on the plate? Uh, you definitely feel in... Yeah, let's see the lead foot moonwalk. Timing rotation, timing vertical. <sighs> Look at the change. Oof. That's different. Wow. Remember... Timing is perfect. The point of application of here are good. The values are high. But I mean, being able to just dial into that yeah. feeling, but... I mean, like I say, strike aside, the footwork yeah. felt better. I definitely felt lighter yeah. at impact, so the timings yeah. were, were affected. See how much now you're using both feet together at the same time. Yeah. Before we had one peak blue, then one peak red. Yeah. Here, they're totally synchronized. Oh, that's beautiful. You, you're still loading toward, even better now, look no, at no. the lead foot. Point you're loading toward the ball of the lead foot between the first and the fourth meta, uh, second metatarsus. You were fifth and fourth before with a negative line of pressure. Minus six, you're 4.6. At that moment, timing of the vertical, lead arc diagonal to the ground. Yeah. I mean, you were miles away after impact. So it's uh, quite an impressive change in a three shot. So Very good. I mean, for me, from, from a strike perspective, I'll self-organize yeah. that. If I know my footwork, because I'm always yeah. one that I want you guys to tell mm -hmm. me if it's right or wrong. Seeing the data, yeah. immediately I can identify mm -hmm. that's right. Yeah. I'll organize the strike and organize yeah. the, 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 the contact. Okay, let's yeah. spend a few more shots, try to apply everything we saw today, yeah. which is a lot. So not <clears throat> going too much to the tray side at top swing, loading toward a good part of the feet, having this action of both feet pushing opposite direction together during the down swing. What was the increase, Jean-Paul, of club head speed before and after? We started at 83. We're going to see what's happening after a few shots now. Okay. Peak lateral, peak rotational. At the right time. At the right time. Point of application, good. Peak vertical. Yeah, a little bit below Before shaft impact parallel is to still the ground. An improvement. Yeah, but you yeah, got an improvement, improvement. Line, yeah. of, line of pressure, lead foot point of application, which is crucial. But look at that magnitude, yeah. John Paul. Yeah, top swing, the distribution yeah. is good as well. So yeah. you're following everything we say, yeah. the point of application, everything there. It's getting better and better. I mean, what are we at peak? I was, what, 180? Just below 180? Yeah, you're now 270. 270 <laughs> so I'm early yeah. and, and yeah. more, right? So yeah, because you're, you're both using feet together. Both feet you now together. have it, your feet active. You, yeah. They were too lazy before. Yeah. Okay, they're active now. Let's have a look at the trackman numbers. Okay, oh, look well, that's that. a big jump, right? There's no luck. If you improve the capacity of your muscles, if you improve the timing, that's mm -hmm. going to improve this data. Yeah. That's yes. not the first goal. The goal was to just to be sure you're not injured, you're having the timing at a good timing. But yep. this is changing stuff. Yeah, four miles per hour plus. Awesome. In three shots. I mean, fine. out of the drills that we did there, first one, great. That one, yeah. immediately the, resp the, the, yeah. the, the, the response and my reaction to that with the next yeah. shot was huge with bringing those two feet acting together. Yeah and peaking the vertical force of the two yeah. foot. That was the really the big, that was a game changer That's for me. That's a great drill. We, we also use that drill, especially for people, have, as I explained before, both feet have to push uh, in the downswing in opposite direction to maximize, at the same time, to maximize the quantity of torque. Yeah. Sometimes we observe players, generally the, lead, the trail foot is pushing, uh, is pushing first and then the lead foot horizontally in the opposite direction. So to try to sync those two feet Pushing in the opposite direction, we use the T40. Uh, we got a progression drill with three drill, but we stopped with the first one for you that was in us. And basically, that fired the, that fired the right muscle. And uh, we sync both uh, peak AP force, total torque, and club head speed increase immediately. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. These are data after, and I'll show you the data when you started today. So the knee initial data here, okay. You started with the Lot on the right side at top swing. Late peak vertical when the ball is gone. Point of application toward the outside, line of pressure this way, and trackman data yeah. Yeah. much lower. Yeah. So that's a good difference. Yeah, very good. Well done. Thank you, boys. Good job. That's amazing.
Great job.